So in our previous video, we were running a little short on time, so I decided to cut it. We're going to continue and finish our discussion in this next very short continuation of DNA cloning. So what, we, what did we establish in the previous video? In the previous video, we established that this cloning uh, is utilized as methods for preparing well-defined DNA sequences in multiple identical copies. Was I able to do that through the cloning method? We did six key steps, and yes, because of the ability of bacteria to divide rapidly and thus replicate rapidly and thus um, give us multiple copies of identical genes that we really want, like insulin, we have thus created and uh, um, achieved our goal of DNA cloning. The last two things I want to talk about are two terms that we've used already in this lecture, but finally define them because we actually have enough background knowledge to really, really give us a good meaning of what cloning vector really is. Cloning vector was utilized in our restriction enzyme video, and now I'm going to continue with what I said before that I would explain it, and I'm going to explain it by stating that a cloning vector is simply going to be considered any DNA molecule, okay? Any DNA molecule, anything that is a DNA molecule that has the ability that can carry within it foreign DNA. That's why it's called a vector. That's the definition of a vector. A vector is something that carries something. So it carries foreign DNA. What's a good example of this? This foreign DNA will actually hopefully be then carried into a new cell before I get into my example, and when it's in the new cell, it will replicate. Did we see this in E. coli? Yes, we did. Why did we see this? Because a perfect example of a cloning vector are plasmids. Plasmids are beautiful cloning vectors within E. coli, let's say, because they are very, very easily, very easily um, able to be obtained. So they're very easily easy to obtain. They're very easily obtained. They're very easily manipulated, just like we did. We can cut them with restriction enzymes, cut and paste a molecule of interest, the gene of interest into them, and it's very easy to reintroduce them, let's say, back to bacteria, uh, to bacteria. So it's very manipulatable, very obtainable, and very easy to introduce back into the bacteria. That's what a cloning vector is. So you should be able to state that we used E. coli's bacterial plasmid as a vector, and we turned that vector into a recombinant DNA molecule, put it back into our cell, and we allowed it to replicate. Why did we do this, though? This is the final topic of DNA cloning. Hopefully you have a sense of it already. What is the use? Why do you have to learn about this? Well, this is an incredibly useful DNA technology process. What is the use of gene cloning? It is simply used, and there's no better way to say this, to amplify, amplify a known, let's say, important, oftentimes important gene. Let's say, like our example we've been using, like insulin. Insulin. Many diabetic people need to inject themselves with this biological protein. How do those, all those people, the millions and millions, hundreds of millions of people, have enough insulin? Insulin seems like something you, it would take a long time to, to sort of make. It would take a long time to acquire. Well, what happens is you do DNA cloning within a bacteria, you sort of hijack the bacteria's ability to replicate so often, and because the bacteria notices an insulin gene within its plasmid, what it's going to do is, without any questions, it's not going to say, no, I don't want to make insulin, it's actually going to produce on its own many protein products, many protein products based on the gene that was inserted, based on inserted gene, let's say. So I would say over here, actually, bacteria is a good way to sort of understand this. So end all be all, DNA cloning. You do all those cloning method steps because what you do is this bacterial cell that gets a new plasmid reintroduced into it, like this, this new plasmid, is going to be there, and that plasmid will have instructions on it. These, this red that I just drew are instructions for insulin. So we'll say instructions for insulin. Once that has been put in there, the bacteria doesn't care what's there. It's just going to say, oh, okay, 
seems like something news here. Let me make a bunch, a bunch of insulin. It will make a bunch of insulin that you as a researcher, it's not going to spit it out like this, but you as a re researcher can take out of it and utilize it in many, many aspects of healthcare. This is a crucial way that we can get products like insulin out on the market for people who need to literally inject themselves with it if necessary. So again, DNA cloning, very relevant to you, very important process. It's a beautiful way to sort of utilize the knowledge that we have of DNA and manipulate our bacterial ancestors to give us a little bit of help in our own human needs.